Hello and welcome to Prairie Pulse. Joining me today is Linda Arath. She is the Arts Education Director for the North Dakota Council on the Arts. Linda, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, John. As we get started, tell the folks a little bit about uh, yourself and your background. Sure. I uh, am the Arts Education Director, as you said, for the North Dakota Council on the Arts. Been there for nine years. Love working with the Arts Council. Prior to that, I worked for 12 years for the State Historical Society of North Dakota as their education person, and I was a classroom teacher before that. What did you teach? Sixth grade, all subjects. Okay. Uh, so tell us about uh, the North Dakota Council on the Arts. What is it? What is it? What, the what North is Dakota Council on the Arts is a state agency. We're funded by the North Dakota State Legislature and the National Endowment for the Arts and we have many functions. We provide artist opportunities, we provide arts organizations funding. Um, we're here to perpetuate the arts in North Dakota. Okay, so then tell us about the arts education program itself. There are several components to the arts education program. One of them is our artist in residence program and that is a program that gives funding, matching funding to schools and nonprofit organizations to bring artists into their communities and schools to do residencies of three days or longer. And the artists that are on this roster are panel reviewed. They are evaluated by their artistic and instructional abilities as it relates to a school residency program. And this roster provides a resource also to communities uh, if they want to bring an artist in for a residency or any educational program. Well, are these artists that are local or regional? Or, you know, you know, what's the scope of uh, the, where the artists come from? We have artists on our roster from all over the United States. Mm -hmm. There's approximately 45 to 50 artists that are on our roster, and they cover all disciplines, dance, music, theater, visual arts, reading, writing, those kind of things. And about half of the artists are from North Dakota. Okay. Well, and then is, is there the new artist program? That is, we have artists that uh, may want to join our roster or artists that a school or an organization wants to work with that isn't on our roster. So they can apply as a new artist and go through this panel review process and uh, be eligible to be on our roster. Okay, and, and then what about the Poetry Out Loud uh, program? The Poetry Out Loud program is a wonderful program for students in grades 9 through 12. It was started back in 2006 by the National Endowment for the Arts and the Poetry Foundation. And they have all 50 states plus Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and Washington, D.C. Students participate in that program. And what they do is they memorize and recite poems that are on an anthology that's either on the Poetry Out Loud website or in a hard copy that's provided to teachers. And it is a pyramid structure that starts with competition in the classroom. And then the classroom winner goes on to compete at a school level, the school sends their school winner to the state finals that we're holding in March of 2010. And that school winner, that's, or the state winner that's selected, is eligible then to go on to a national competition in Washington, D.C. The first year that Poetry Out Loud was nationwide, there were about, um, I think, 10,000 students that participated. Last year, there were over 300,000 nationwide that participated. Oh, gosh. So, so this uh, has been a very successful program then. Oh, yes. Very su successful. In fact, in North Dakota, the first year we had it, there were three schools that participated. The second year, eight schools. And, year, and now we have 23, 25 schools. And we've doubled in student numbers, too. Uh, last year we had, or in 2007, we had about 1,100 students that participated. In last year's uh, program, there were over 2,200. So it's really growing by leaps and bounds. Hmm. Wow. And a really wonderful component of this program is that we have our uh, poets throughout North Dakota that travel to the schools that are p participating and do workshops with the students. So these students get a chance to realize we have 
poets right here in North Dakota that are living, breathing, and loving what they're doing. Oh, that, that is fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, and, and now we, we talked about the Artist Exchange Program a little bit, and, and your organization in Prairie Public got the opportunity to produce sort of a story or a feature piece on this, and uh, our videographer, editor Dave Geck, I believe, worked with you on that. Can you talk some, we're going to show this piece in just a moment, but before we do, talk some about uh, what the piece is about and kind of set up uh, what we're going to look at. Oh, I'd be happy to do that. The piece that we're going to see is an overview of an international artist and exchange program that we have with Iceland. And this started back in 2003. And what we do is we select an artist from our roster that we talked about to go to Iceland to do a residency for a week long. Then in uh, the year, we do this every other year. In the year that we don't send a North Dakota artist over, we bring an Icelandic artist to northeastern North Dakota up in the Edinburgh Cavalier area. and. Um, this video will provide, as I said, an overview of the program, and it will also focus on 2007. We brought Christian Goodfinson to a woodcarver, and they, he and the students at Edinburgh and Cavalier carved a totem pole out of a 17-foot log using mallets and chisels. So you'll see that in the video also. Okay. Well, let's take a look at that right now. The Artists in Schools Exchange Program brings artists from North Dakota to Iceland and artists from Iceland to North Dakota to work with students. It allows them an experience of an artist from another culture, to hear language from another country, to really get a chance to delve into the traditions that are from each country. In 2003, we started a program called the Artists in Schools Exchange, where we send artists from North Dakota to Iceland, and artists from Iceland come to North Dakota. This is funded through the National Endowment for the Arts. We wanted to foster a place for artists to share their experiences, their art form, and to really integrate art into the lives of students and teachers and communities. Well, there's a lot of connections between North Dakota and Iceland. Both are very rich in traditions that have deep relationships to beautiful landscapes, sometimes severe weather, animals important to ranching and farming, and historical immigration. The residencies are a week long, and the school is called Lagalandskoli in Iceland. It has about 70 students. They're grades one through 10. The area around the school reminds you somewhat of North Dakota. It has the rolling hills like you find here in the central Dakotas. So the week is spent with the students in the classroom working with all the age groups. Just a great experience for both students and artists. We focus on the northeastern section of North Dakota up in the Cavalier Edinburgh region. And the reason for that is there's a large Icelandic American population in that area. In 1875, there was a volcano, Mount Astra, erupted, causing the economy to be devastated and famine. So a lot of people immigrated to Canada and the United States. The first artist that we sent to Iceland was in 2004, and that was Gretchen Biederman. She lived in Mandan, North Dakota at the time. She's now living in Great Falls, Montana. She's known for her drawings and paintings of horses. Iceland has this magnificent horse culture, and in North Dakota, we also have a strong connection to the horse culture also. Well, Gretchen chose the theme of land, animals, and people as the theme for her residency and introduced printmaking to the students. Another artist that we sent over was Seal Ann Clement, who is a storyteller, and Seal Ann is from Hedinger, North Dakota. 
Seal Ann is another artist who's on the roster for the North Dakota Council on the Arts and she tells stories to all ages from preschool up to adults. She really believes that storytelling is the oldest form of communication and is a way to build bridges between and within cultures. So she selected the theme Connections Through Storytelling for her residency. And what was wonderful for her, she said, was hearing the stories that she had introduced these students to in the English language, hearing them being retold in Icelandic to a very receptive younger audience. Another artist that we've sent there is Robin Reynolds, who is from Hebron, North Dakota. And she is a potter, works with uh, Hebron clay, North Dakota clay. The students that Robin worked with created vessels and the vessels had images on them of features of the land or animals from the sea. Well the children were very teachable. They were allowed a great deal of freedom which they used responsibly. It was beautiful. They had had no snow through the winter and the day before I arrived, it snowed. And so the country was covered with a beautiful, fresh snowfall. And as the week progressed, it melted off. And the moss was in bloom, so the island was emerald green. And as the green came through the melting snow, it was, and then the black of the lava, it was beautiful reminded me so much of North Dakota, except everything that was scoria here was black there, and the high bluffs reminiscent of our buttes, and then the horses. I fell in love with the horses. The face of an Icelandic horse is just a dream come true. They are, there's a gentleness that comes through them that's, that's really unparalleled. There are so many parallels between the North Dakota experience and the Icelandic experience in terms of our population base, our isolation, our love of land, sort of independence in spirit. I came back from that trip not worn down, no jet lag. I was energized for months. The artists from Iceland, we've selected those in a variety of ways. The first year we brought Kristen Jan's daughter over. That was in 2003. And we learned about her from the North Dakota Museum of Art in Grand Forks. Kristen is an artist who works mainly with textiles, but she also does drawing and visual arts like that. In 2005, we contacted the Arne Magnuson Institute at the University of Iceland. They referred us to a storyteller by the name of Thor Vigfusen. Thor specializes in ghost stories. In fact, he's responsible for establishing a ghost center in Iceland. Ghost stories that he tells are spirits and beings that play tricks on people, they hide in places, and they do all sorts of things. And so he came to Cavalier School and worked with the students there in 2005 to introduce them to the ghost stories. Whatever the stories are, he really brings these narratives to life. In 2007, we invited Gujan Christensen to come to Cavalier and Edinburgh to work with the high school students and the elementary students there. Some say it's not a song, some say it's, it sounds awful, but I'm going to sing some for you. So, here it comes. Gujan is an expert builder of stone and turf structures and he is a singer of the ancient Icelandic poems or sagas that are called Reimer. Okay. He is a wonderful carver of wood, so the students were introduced to some unique carving techniques by Gujan. 
he worked with a 17-foot oak log. He used an electric chainsaw, wooden mallets that he made once he got here, and chisels that he brought with them. And they use these instruments to carve symbols from Nordic mythology into the oak log. I think it's very important that everybody feel their roots, where they come from, and it's in the nature of most people, people I think, they want to know their background. In, the, in America, you, in this area, it's, uh, it's uh, big Iceland. <laughs> the landscape is completely different, but it's very, very much like home. <laughs> Don't dance like this. People are uh, very Scandinavian area, yeah. I've met lots of people who speak, understand Icelandic and speak Icelandic and, and they speak the dialect, old dialect, like my family and my, my brother and sister speak because we come from Westfjords. There was a young man that Gujan had a conversation with. His mother is from Iceland and he speaks Icelandic also. So it was quite fun for Gujan and this young man to have a conversation back and forth and for Gujan to hear his own language and for this young boy to be able to share his knowledge of the language, not only with his classmates, but with the artist that was here from Iceland. <laughs> this has been just a great experience for the kids here in Cavalier and also for the community in general. Once this totem pole is complete, we will put it on display here at the museum and we'll get a plaque with the students' names who participated in this. And as you can see with an oak tree, it's going to be here for at least 100 years. So it will be great for those kids to be able to come back to this museum and this park and show their children a project that they were able to participate in while attending Cavalier and the Edinburgh schools. Drop it down just a hair and bring it over a little bit. The log is now in the community. It is up for people to see at the Pembina County Historical Museum, which is right across the highway from Icelandic State Park. The feedback that we get from the Icelandic students has been that they really enjoy learning about North Dakota's horse culture or learning the pottery and, and that this pot, that this clay actually came from North Dakota. It just has been an amazing experience, I think, for students on both sides of the ocean. The major emphasis for this program is to foster educational and cultural exchange between North Dakota and Iceland. And we look at this as an opportunity for our artists from both countries to share their art form and to share their ideas with site partners. Linda, that was a nice piece. Can, can you talk uh, about what the kids get out of working with an artist like this? Well, when you saw them working with Gujan, you know, first of all, they're hearing the language, the Icelandic language. And uh, with the young man that was talking to Gujan in Icelandic, what an opportunity for him to you know, be able to converse in front of his friends in a language that they don't speak. Also, what a great opportunity for students to work together on a project, build that teamwork together, and, and uh, have a project such as a totem pole that's now standing in their community that they can go visit and say, I worked on that. I, I was a part of that. Okay. Well, and I know you have a good relationship with uh, North Dakota's troubadour, Chuck Suki, uh, as Prairie Public does. Uh, can you talk about maybe what uh, you're involved with uh, with Chuck? 
Chuck is involved with the North Dakota Council in a, in mm -hmm. a couple different capacities. Uh, he is one of the poets that goes around to schools visiting as part of the Poetry Out Loud program. And he's also been selected to go to Iceland to be involved in this International Artist Exchange. He'll be going in April of 2010 and he is a musician and songwriter for those of people that don't know Chuck. And he is really looking forward to the opportunity to not only perform for these students but to have them learn some of the songs. Uh, he plans to have them take apart songs and learn some of the rhyming techniques hopefully having them writing and performing their own songs before he leaves. Well, wow, now that's interesting. Yeah. Well, I, you know, are the arts funded uh, well enough in schools uh, and in our communities, in your opinion? Yeah. No, they aren't. We need, um, there are, in, like in Bismarck alone, they have three art specialists that travel around to all the schools. Uh, and so, you know, that's just one program, the, the visual arts. But no, there's, it needs to be a part of, I think, the curriculum for every day, for every student in every community. And um, hopefully when we can accomplish that, then I can say yes, the arts are funded appropriately. Well, it, how important is it to expose young children to the arts? I think it's very important. An example that comes to mind right away is we have um, a residential community in North Dakota, a school that where students live there because they have behavior problems. And I was visiting with the person who writes the grant for that school one one time and, and complimenting her on the work, hard work for writing a grant every grant round to bring an artist into this residential setting. And her comment to me was, she said, I have to do that because the week the artist is in our school is the only week I don't have to write up disciplinary actions for our students. So that speaks a lot to what the power of the arts can do. It really does. Yeah. It really does. There's another program that uh, you may want to touch on here briefly. Just you have it's called the teacher incentive program. Can you tell us what that's about? Sure. Uh, that is for classroom teachers to write a grant to the Arts Council. They have no match that they need to come up with, and it's to provide materials and supplies for a project that they want to do that uh, brings together uh, a non-art subject with an art. So like if they want to um, do a project in social studies that involves learning, um, you know, a tradition or a culture from that country, they can write a grant to us, describe the project, and provide a budget, and then it's panel reviewed, and they can get the funding then to come have this arts um, experience in their classroom for their students. When uh, you made a comment, you know, you can write a grant, and don't, uh, so how many grants or awards do y'all give out? We um, give a lot, we just had a grant round in mm -hmm. November, and we gave out 38 artist in residence grants across the state of North Dakota and about 60, 65 teacher incentive grants. So those take place in very rural areas and in major cities like Fargo, Bismarck and Grand Forks too. So it's very widespread. We'd love to have more schools and teachers writing grants to us and uh, we encourage them to go to our website mm -hmm. at uh, www.nd.gov slash arts, A-R-T-S, and click on the grants section and see what uh, what we can do for them. Hmm. Okay. Well, now, are there some other things uh, coming up on the horizon uh, for North Dakota Council on the Arts that you're involved with? Yeah, in the arts education program, we are starting a um, program where we team artists and teachers together uh, to work over an extended period longer than a week-long residency. They can renew a grant for up to three years and work together as a team to really look at how can we design curriculum and learning activities for students that will help them to get better at what they're doing and help us as teachers and artists to get better at what we're doing. Hmm. Okay. Well, again, now uh, you, you've already talked some about, but if, because you said teachers apply for grants, mm -hmm. but then artists and art groups, can they apply for grants also? 
Yeah, we have a number of grants. We have a professional development grant that artists, teachers, okay. arts organizations can apply to. Um, arts organizations have um, institutional support grants they can apply for. Mm -hmm. We have a number that's it's for artists, communities, schools, um, nonprofit organizations. So we try to take care of as many people as we can. Well, good. And again, that website for them to contact or get more information? Is www.nd.gov slash arts, A-R-T-S. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, thank you for, for having us here. It was wonderful. Okay. Well, that's all we have for Prairie Pulse this week. And as always, thanks for watching.